We're going to be talking about sort of reflow, some fundamentals. Uh, the best place to start is explain to you a little bit about where this uh, where this talk actually began. Um, a number of years ago, um, uh, Ron Lasky uh, asked me to I'm trying to get the right page here. Here we go. Yeah, Ron Lasky asked me to to uh, write the chapter on solder reflow in this on this book. Uh, uh, Ron and Jim Hall have been been extremely helpful to me um, in 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 having some confidence in doing these sorts of things. Um, and then that particular chapter turned into half day classes that were taught at SMTAI in 2015 through 2017. Uh, um, they got fairly decent reviews, which again helped me be a little more confident in what I was doing. Then Chris Shea came and said, hey, you know, could we take that and make it a lot shorter and make that the uh, reflow section of, uh, of Jumpstart program? So we did that and it became you know, part of it was done in Rosemont in uh, 2018 and 19, and actually Guadalajara in 2018. So for this particular particular discussion, what I've done is kind of taken a mixture of the half day class, which would have taken too long for this one, and the SMTA uh, Jumpstart program, and kind of combined them to become something in the middle. So something to take about an hour. Um, to me, it was a bit helpful because uh, I felt as if the Jumpstart program really took a lot of the meat out of it, uh, but it was very, very good for, for beginning people. So anyhow, we'll go forward and we'll start talking about this. As I mentioned, we're talking about sort of reflow fundamentals. When I say fundamentals, I mean really going back to the beginning. Okay, so the surface mount process, is, as most of you guys are aware of, it includes screen printing, pick and place, and reflow. It's that simple, okay? Defects in electronic assemblies, according to SMTAI, are broken down into these particular areas. Obviously, it's the solder paste and the screen printer is one of those, and that tends to be about that 64, 65% of defects show up there. Solder reflow is basically in that 15% range. It kind of shares with, with component placement. Um, but the interesting thing is the solder paste is the thing that's really the same thing that, that we talk about in screen printing and reflow is the thing that really drives that. So this is the outline for the original, original half day class. And I've shortened a couple of the sections up and we won't cover these things towards the end unless we run out of time. That basically is the outline of what we'll be covering today. So we'll get rid of that. And what we'll do is talk about solder reflow itself, the purpose. Purpose is simply melt the solder, you know, and that's the thing that's important to us. Now, I could take right now and say, yep, that's the end of the discussion. That's what we talk about with solder reflow. We need to melt the solder. But we also need to be able to make a robust solder joint. Okay, so we need our neck gives me the ability to talk for the next uh, 45 minutes, an hour or so. Okay. Melting requires that we heat the assembly. It's that simple. A robust solder joint means we have to use the correct thermal profile. By correct, we usually mean the thermal profile described by the solder paste manufacturer. But that's not true in all cases because not all printed circuit boards are the same. They have different types of materials, they have different components, number of layers, weight. Sometimes there are special requirements and design issues, okay? One of those might be components. Sometimes components cannot withstand the temperature or the peak temperatures that we talk about with the solder paste itself. So that's an important thing to remember, that the paste manufacturer's recommendation is a good place to start but it may not be best for every application. It's a guideline. Matter of fact, there are times that you have particular design with a, with a board that the, that the paste manufacturer's recommendation will not work correctly for you. Okay, so let's go back. Let's talk a little bit about something. Profile versus a recipe. Okay, that's an important factor to understand when you're talking about reflow. Okay, a profile is a targeted thermal process. 
were a recipe of the oven settings to obtain the profile. You'd be amazed at the number of times that I'm working with somebody and I'll say, gee, send me a copy of your profile. Tell me what your targets are. And what they do is send me a copy of their, their oven settings. You know, unless I've got exactly the same oven that they've got, it tends to be a little bit of a problem to make that to, 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 to make that work out. They have to go back and say, please send me your profile. 